We're already at the last super basic series limit law we're going to prove. Things get a lot more interesting from here. Today we'll prove that if a series converges to alpha, then that same series, but with every term multiplied by the same real number c, converges to the same limit times c, so c times alpha. So for example, the first term of this series would be c times a1. Then the second term would be c times a2. The third term would be c times a3, and so on. Our proof of this will be quite similar to the previous proofs we did for the series sum law and the series difference law. I'll leave links in the description to my lessons on both of those. Again, this proof will just come down to considering sequences of partial sums and a previously proven limit law for sequences. Since we know this series converges to alpha, what can we say about the sequence of its partial sums? Well, by definition, it its sequence of partial sums, which we might call Sn, converges to alpha. That's what it means for the series to converge to or equal alpha. Then if we consider the sequence C times Sn by our previously proven limit laws for sequences, we know that this sequence must converge to C times alpha. Remember, we're trying to prove that if we multiply every term in the series by this real number c, then the limit will be c times alpha. But we've already proven this sort of result for sequences, so if we multiply every term in the sequence of partial sums by c, we know that will converge to c times alpha. And I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving that limit law for sequences. Now, to prove that this series converges to c times alpha, we just have to prove that the sequence of partial sums of the series converges to c times alpha. So so the idea from here on is pretty simple. All we're going to do is prove that this sequence, which we know converges to c times alpha, is in fact the same as this sequence, and so it must converge to c times alpha as well. To prove that this sequence is the same as this one, we'll take an arbitrary term of this sequence. So what would an arbitrary term c times sn look like? Well, by definition, definition, it would be c times the nth partial sum of our series. So that's c times a1 plus a2 all the way up to plus a n. Then by the distributive property, this is equal to c times a1 plus c times a2 plus all the way up to plus c a n. And as you can see, this is by definition the nth partial sum of this series, which means it's the nth term of the sequence of partial sums. So this is equal to the sum from k equals one to n of c times a k. What we just did was show that the nth term of this sequence for an arbitrary n equals the nth term of this sequence of partial sums. Thus, since this sequence converges to c times alpha, this one does as well, which by definition means that this series converges to c times alpha, since its sequence of partial sums does. Finally, I like to tie this all together with a string of limit equalities, so let's write that. We were trying to prove something about this series, which is by definition definition equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of its nth partial sum, if the limit exists. But we just showed that the nth partial sum is in fact equal to the nth term of this sequence. So the limit of the partial sums as n goes to infinity equals the limit as n goes to infinity of that sequence, c times sn. Then by our sequence limit laws, we know that we can take the c out of the limit. And so this is all equal to c times the limit of the sequence Sn. Sn was defined to be the sequence of partial sums 
of this series, which converges to alpha, so that sequence of partial sums converges to alpha, and so all of this is equal to c times alpha. And that's how you prove the series limit law for a constant times a convergent series. If a series converges to alpha, then the series created by multiplying each term of that series by the same constant real number c converges to c times alpha. Umbrella sun.